Howdy, y'all. I'm Kevin, and my show is called Hiking with Kevin. Thanks for joining. Today I'm in Austin, and Austin is the home of UT, University of Texas. Football, of course, is huge down here. In the Colorado River, right off my right side here. All the bars, the drinking, the humidity, and of course, the film festival South by Southwest. And that's how I'm finding my direction today. I'm just heading toward the film festival, South by Southwest, and Looks like I've come to a dead end here. South is that way. Southwest would be that way. Okay, we're back on track. It's gonna be a great hike today. So take your protein pills, put your football helmet on. Let's have at it. My hiking partner today is a sassy Southern sweetheart. She's from Austin. She's the daughter of a preacher. She tours the country giving speeches. They're uh, very empowering to women very uplifting. I think she calls it evenings of spicy banter, real life inspiration, and pure fun. She's the host of her own podcast, For the Love. Oh, and she's also a New York Times bestseller. That's right, today we're hiking with the inspirational, the fabulous Jen Hatmaker. Why is it that so many people drink in Austin? Oh my gosh. Oh, I, I, I passed maybe 50 bars to get to this uh, hiking site. I'm gonna go ahead and agree with you, and I'm gonna also suggest that I could possibly be part of the problem. I don't know that for sure. <laughs> would you say that you're a preacher? Yeah. You are a preacher. Like, I would say that's one of my things. Yeah. Um, one of your labels. It's one of my labels. I, I, I'm an interesting, I'm weird. Like, I don't know where I belong in the, um, in the Barnes and Noble bookstore. I don't, I, know, right? I have a lot of things. I really am. And that's one of them. For a while that confused me and I thought, gosh, pick a lane, hat maker, you know? <laughs> um, but now I'm like, no, that's just how I am. It's okay for me to like, I'm at preach on a Sunday and then write a cookbook, you know? Got, um, this is treacherous. Look at this. This is like know, Bear is, Gorilla stuff back it's, here. It's only a short bit of it though, okay. so it's not that bad. But do we have to come back up this is the question I have for you right now. Well, as far as I know... Oh, damn it. When was the last time you injured yourself? I injured myself? Yeah. I'll be 45 this summer. How do you feel about that? Well, I feel like every day is a series of very small, tiny micro injuries. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and they're not exciting like they used to be. Like, I used to tear my ACL playing fast pitch softball. That felt exciting. That felt, yeah. you know, noteworthy. Now it's like I move too fast, like reaching for the toilet paper. So <laughs> it's depressing. <laughs> Jen, you ever have to cancel a personal appearance? Like, you know how it is with a show. Once yeah. people have bought their tickets, and in my case, a bunch of people have like flown or traveled to get there. I know it. You just can't, it, I mean, I've got to be like in a really bad way to cancel a show. And I was that day, but. But you did it. Powered through. Thanks for coming to that, by the that way. That was fun. I, I was so impressed at the following that you have. Thank you. I do have a loyal community. Okay, look at us. This is officially high peak. Yeah. This level of incline. Yeah. <coughs> okay. okay. Let's rest. <laughs> I've noticed that you have got an incredible female following. Yeah. Because a lot of your message is about empowering women. Yeah. Right? That's right. It's women supporting women. Yes. And when I saw you that night, I was I was just amazed, I was impressed, Thank astonished. You. I mean, I look everywhere and people are so into your message. That's nice. And you are so um, intriguing to watch and captivating. And you know exactly the marks to hit, mm. what relates to people. And I noticed also that what really connects with the people is showing your vulnerable side. That's right. And your foibles. Yeah. Because people say, oh, she's like me. Totally. And that's not bad. It's just human. Yeah, that's right. I'm just super for women. Like, I don't even know how else to say it. I am such a fan, I'm such a cheerleader of our community. So believe in the power of women and our place in the world and what what lies in possibility for all of us. And so, I mean, it is absolutely sincere for me. I mean, I, I am sincere to my bone marrow about cheering women on to their like highest potential oh, yeah. and giving them also a safe place to just say, 
I am doing a real, real bad job at this right now, or I completely failed at this, or yeah. marriage is hard, or whatever the thing is. I mean, it's just life. It doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. It's just life. But also, you have the collective legacy that yeah. you run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's my husband's. He runs that okay. full time, um, and that's our nonprofit. We started it almost three years ago, and we just essentially give millions of dollars away. That's what we do. It's so fun. Wow, it's probably the greatest thing we do. Yeah. So it's all a bunch of like normal people. It's no big givers. There's no huge donors. It's not like big corporate sponsors. It's just like regular people. Right. And we Every pool, bit helps. We pool our money together every month. Mm -hmm. And then we nominate and vote on um, organizations and nonprofits that we believe in all around the world, domestically and abroad. And then we fund their initiatives. How's Brandon doing? He's doing really good. Yeah. He's fun. You know, we've been married for 25 years. It's just bananas. Wow. Can you believe that? No, I actually... You didn't think it would last, did you? <laughs> A lot of people didn't think it would last. <laughs> Jen, your maiden name is King. Yeah. Yet you married a hat maker. I know, right? Why did so you easy. digress like that? I know. Such demotion. If you got married now, would you keep your own name? I don't think so. Let me see. Let me think what I let me think what 2019 Jen would do. Um <laughs> I think I would take Brandon's name still. I think yeah. I still have that like bit of traditional ism running yeah. through my okay. blood. But if one of my daughters decided to keep their name, I think I'd be really proud. You would be. Yeah. So I think that would, I'd be thrilled to yeah. have them want to keep our name. You grew up the daughter of a preacher. Yeah. Well How... kind of. He was very, very rogue. How awful like, was that, or was it? Well, in some ways, my dad's just like off the grid. Yeah. He um, was the, I had the two greatest parents. Like I cannot oh, even nice. tell you. I had the happiest childhood. Oh good. We're so close and connected. And so we never really had to conform um, to whatever the mold was. Yeah. We got to just sort of live off the grid all together. You are absolutely happy with the work you do, aren't you? That's a good question. I really am now. Um, but you weren't for a while. I just had a sense that in a lot of ways, not always, but in a lot of ways, I was sort of shape-shifting to please my subculture and really, to be more honest, like not upset them, yes. not rattle the cages, just like play nice, you know, just go along with the thing. Right. And, and you're talking about the Church of God? Yeah, I mean, that whole following or? kind of like a Christian subculture, yeah. and so, which you know, I kind of grew up in that. That's my, that's, that's my, yeah, that's my yeah. background, and, um, and share, you know, a lot of those values. But, um, I found all these tension points for me that were just constantly rubbing, and I realized these aren't going away, um, and so I can either stay silent on these things and maintain my popularity and <laughs> my career. Is that's that what, what you do? Yeah, that's what I do. That's working for you. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I should have yeah. taken a playbook, a page on your playbook. Or you could speak your mind, that's your right. truth. Like at the end of the day, my integrity wasn't worth it. And so I thought, well, I think I'd rather lose everything I've built and be able to look myself in the mirror and at the end of the day said this is the right thing. Mm -hmm. um, and what's been exciting to find out is my career did take a wobble there for a minute. It took a, took a pretty big hit. When was that? 2016. 2016, okay. And like the genesis of that, there's more than one thing. I've never been a real great fit for my community. Just a little bit too much. I'm a sconch extra. And a little mouthy. I just kept trying to do the, the, you're be just nice. A, you're, as you say, you're a sassy, sweet southerner. Well, I mean, my gosh, you know, what am I supposed to do? That's just what it is. <laughs> That's what you are. And so, and I'm opinionated and I have a real high justice meter. And so in 2016, Brandon and I, and I know this is gonna sound absurd to you because you're like, well, duh, this is just, that's just being a good human. But in our subculture, this was a thing. Um, we sort of came out and said, this is, we are just like unequivocally, like we, we welcome and we embrace and we affirm in every way our LGBTQ friends and neighbors yeah. and brothers and sisters. Um, and they are, just as wonderful and capable of great good and inclusion as anybody that's ever been born. Right. So, I mean, that's just obvious, I know it. Of course. But at the time, if you know anything about sort of Christian culture, apparently that was a deal. 
That was a deal that we said that. And that was a deal breaker. It was a deal breaker is what it was. Yeah. So we lost book contracts and we our books were pulled off shelves and I'm all about the road less traveled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so our our books were pulled and off shelves, even out of print. Yeah. Um, we lost a lot of um, speaking work and even just partnerships. And so for a minute, it felt a little bit scary. Yeah. Like, are we going to rebound here? Oh, look, we're just going to dead end into the water. Isn't this pretty? Pretty, look at yeah. this. So there was a lull for your career and your, your message for a while. Yeah, it was a lull. Um, it all sort of took a little took a little dip. Some yeah. of it took a nosedive. And did you get a lot of like hate mail? And yeah. Yeah, death like, threats? yes, Ugh. yes, all well, of it. Isn't it odd that you would get death threats from people that are so believing in God? And... Isn't that weird? It's so embarrassingly off-brand yeah. that I don't know how to even make sense of it. And so that was just a real rocky time um, of, well, I guess betrayal, felt like betrayal and disillusionment right. and then ultimately recovery. Nobody's nobody's conditioned to take that degree of criticism and hate Look, our brandon was very supportive at the time oh my gosh we were absolutely circle. in it together you we were thelma who... and louise going over the cliff in the same car and did you see who your friends were then 100 percent. yeah and i met a bunch of new friends and that's what's great so yeah. stepping into that space of like advocacy and allyship meant our lives became so expansive yeah. and full of an amazing new community that welcomed us with open arms, obviously. And um, I cannot believe how full of like happiness and joy we are right now. And and That's our cool. careers have grown. They didn't just rebound, they grew. And they grew in a different direction. The one that, so when you asked me earlier, you seem really happy in your work. That's yeah. why I'm like, I am now. I Let me just like, back up yeah. a little bit. What, what was this turning point for you where you realized that the LGBTQ community was worthwhile and needed to have respect and the same values as everybody else. It seems so absurd for me to have to discuss this now because it's so crystal clear to me. Yeah. It was so pitch perfect clear that I can't ever believe this was um, something to like wrestle through or work through or sort through. Um, but it just began for me like it always does with people. And so I'm looking around like gay friends and I'm like, wait a minute, what? This yeah. is crazy. Like, what are we talking about? And then, more specifically, like into my community, I started noticing how deeply, like, just the church at large, bunch of, not just one, but in Big C Church, had harmed that community terribly and hurt them and rejected them and forced them into conversion therapy, into um, celibacy, and just as inhumane. Right, like inhumane, and yeah. all, all you have to do is look at, um, you know, you're looking at gay teenagers with seven times the suicide rate. Yeah. So, I mean, just the data says, wait a minute, we've got a problem here. And so, people are what brought me into the conversation, and then my heart That's gave so me the cool. rest. That's... Do you think it's just as much the Texas culture as it is your subculture? There's no question that I think you find a little bit more backwards approach to marginalized communities in the Deep South. Um, that sort of behavior is not just protected yeah. down here more, but even like celebrated. It's, it's, it's rewarded. Um, where you get outside of that space, people are like, what the hell are you guys talking about? You guys are maniacs. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so my suspicion is yes. Because you notice a difference when you travel north. Totally. Yeah. Totally, like absolutely different in every way and not just that way, in a thousand ways. And so I do think there is just sort of like a very conservative undercurrent that is persistent like in the deep. That's my guess. Right. Yeah. And paddle boarding is a huge deal here. Okay, Jen, finish the sentence. Okay. I regret. I really regret deeply, like this is as deep as it goes, wearing um, jean overalls when I was pregnant. That was so unfortunate. <laughs> that's the, it's a tragedy. That's the biggest thing you regret. That's yes! pretty good. Oh, you haven't seen the pictures. <laughs> oh my God. Do you like to make the bed? 
this is really weird because I wanted to ask you this question on this walk. Okay, I'll In my car too. on the way here, I was like, ask Kevin if he makes the bed every day because I have some thoughts about this. Do you? Lately, no. It feels to me like such an adult thing to do. Yeah. And I cannot pull it off. And I bought all these pillows, like a hundred. So it makes me feel grown up. Like if I walk into my bedroom and my bed is made, I feel grown. And I feel like I have my shit together. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. I'm a person with a made bed. I'm just, that means something. Yes, look at these people using great? this river. I'd like to tell you something about this river. In Austin, the truth is that all of our lakes are the Colorado River. And so oh. when somebody comes here, they're like, I just want to make sure that you know in your mind, you can say what you want, but you know that this is a river. It's not a lake, right? And I'm like, we'll say what the hell we want. <laughs> Texas is... Texas really loves itself, you know? Yeah. It's it's a, it's an affliction. It's incurable, I'm sorry to say. Texas Texas has open carry opinions, don't they? Um, in spades. <laughs> and we're not interested in opinion reform. No. At all. We say no to those laws. Yeah. And there's just, you'll not meet a state that is more into itself than this one. Like we put like the star of Texas on everything on our highways, on our bodies, on our lunch trays at school. Have you it is do you see absurd. less Confederate flags now? In, in Austin, definitely. Yeah, it's so progressive. Yeah, Austin. this is such a progressive city. But I'm telling you, I'm not sure you'd want to venture out to like far west or far east Texas. Yeah. I think you might feel like you went back in time 100 years. Impressed you recently that you've met? Really oh, good question. You. Let's see. Oh, I meet so many of the greatest people, especially through the podcast. Yeah, the podcast. For the, for the love. For the love, yes. Yeah, that's a southern that's saying. For the love. It's, like, oh, for the love. It's, it's just, on every Thursday or when is it? Yeah, we really say like every Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah. And just recently, I was in California doing a different tour and I interviewed Melinda Gates. She's oh. no joke. Like, she's no joke. She no. is. She's out there changing the world, and I was super impressed by her. I mean, that seems obvious to say. Who's not impressed oh, by Melinda Gates? It. But and all, a lot of times they're the quiet people behind the powerful man, right? Yeah, I mean, she's just kind of like a nerdy computer science person. Yeah. And I mean that nicely, Melinda. But and here she is using all of her power and all of her wealth to, I mean, honestly change the world. They give away so much money. Don't they? It's bananas. And do we get any of it? No. Thank not you. Not one penny. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the inspired hiking skills of Jen Hatmaker. How cool is she? Man, what a fun hike. I actually do make my bed every day. I just didn't want to make her feel bad. <laughs> not true, not true. But, man, what a fun hike. Uh, if you want more of Jen, check our blogs out on Twitter and Instagram, at Jen Hatmaker. Also, great podcast for the love. Oh, and you got to check out our latest book, Fierce, Free, and Full of Fire. All right, thanks for joining. Please subscribe, turn on notifications, that little bell, and we'll catch you all next time. Happy trails.